All praises. So today we want to go over a lesson entitled, To Hear God, You Must Leave the Christian Church. To hear God, you must leave the church. <laughs> I'm going to open up with a very uh, famous face. I'm going to open up with a video on our dear brother named T.D. Jakes. And the reason I want to open up with him is because he attempted to break down Jacob and Esau in one of his dear sermons. So what I want to do is for us to just take a listen. And I gave the, the, the stopping points. Who, who's running the video? Who got the video? I gave you the stopping points, right? Let me hear it. Call it up so I, I know you got it. You know you're working with me. Okay. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Right, and what else? Okay, so there's several points, so I need everybody to listen. I, I went through the whole video, I said I got to make sure I'm not missing nothing. So I want y'all to listen, because I know some of your mothers and fathers are in the Potter house. I know some of you came out of the Potter's house. So what we want to do is show you the understanding on these world-renowned preaches when it comes to the history of the Bible and how it relates to us today. I don't know if y'all, can y'all put the video up? I don't know if the image is going to be good, but the audio should be well. Okay, let, let's, let's take a look. So... No, 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 I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk over a little bit. You know what I'm going to do? I normally receive the offering right now, but I'm going to put it on hold. And I'm going to go right into the Word of God because I'm kind of excited about what the Lord gave me. That leprechaun and, jacket and really bothers jump me. jump into it. And so us as deacons, just, just chill for a minute. You don't have to go into the offering right now. I'm going to go into the Word of God, and then we'll receive the offering after the Word. Is really? that all right? So when I saw this, I said, wow, what's going on here? Today, we're going to uh, look at a couple of passages of Scripture. I want to go first to Genesis 25, uh -oh. 19 through 34 in the NIV. And I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. And I want you to put to stand on your feet uh, for just a moment. Oh, so so that now. I can let you eavesdrop on this conversation that the Lord and I are having about grasping the moment. Grasping the moment. Hmm. Yeah. Jacob and Esau, grasping the moment. About grasping the moment. Again, it's Genesis chapter 25, 19 through 34. You're watching online, get your Bible, join in. Oh, let's get our Bibles. Experience this because there's a reason that God has you uh, online this morning streaming to hear the word of God. That's right. Because there is a moment that you have to grasp. Uh oh. If you don't grasp it, it won't happen. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We hearing. Go ahead, preacher. Come on. Now, it begins on this wise. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son. So in verse Isaac. 19. Go ahead. Abraham became the father of Isaac, mm -hmm. and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel. Okay. The Aramean from Padam Aram and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Oh, Isaac Syrian. Somebody prayed says. to the Lord Same. on behalf of his wife mm -hmm. because she was childless. Okay. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. Mm. She became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her. The babies jostled. They, they fought. Oh, they fought. Okay. They wrestled. Mm. They rolled around. Come on. They kicked yeah. within her. And she said, why is this happening to me? Why am I thus? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her. What did he say? Two nations are in your womb. Uh-oh. 
He coming two with it. Two nations are in your womb, I and think. two people from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Now, that's important. The older will serve the younger. Mm. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. Uh -huh. Two of them. Two. Twin boys. Two mm. boys in her womb. Come on. The first to come out was red. Uh-oh. And his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. So I'm excited as Can I'm hearing imagine? him break this down. I'm excited. They wow. come out all hairy, mm. and they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. Now, what? that's what got me. That's when what got his him. brother came out. Mm -hmm with his hand grasping Esau's heel. Remember grasping So he was named Jacob. Uh-huh, okay. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebecca gave birth to them. Keep on that ought to make you nervous. That ought to make you nervous, okay. They were stronger back then. What time, you're watching the time, right? You know I can't stomach too Hallelujah. much of this. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> Without CVS. <laughs> and the boys grew up. You'll get it later. Don't worry about it. The, the, the boys grew up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, TD. All the men got it. <laughs> the boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Mm -hmm. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. Uh -oh. I'm famished. That is why he was called Edom. Mm, Jacob okay. replied, first sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? Mm. Mm. But Jacob sweared to me first. But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Okay, you stop right there. Let's jump over to 29 minutes. I'm gonna skip to 23. Let's jump over to 29, 14. I know a little spittle came up as I was watching this. You know, I can't stomach too much of these Christian preachers, but. I said to myself, you know what? He may be getting, gaining some understanding. Let's see. You at 2914? Comes out first. Now it's talking about order because when God talks about two, there must be order. When God talks about two, there must be order. When God talks about two, there has to be order because order defines agreement. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says... It's not just enough that you know that there are two people and that there are two nations coming out of you. It is important that you understand the order. Esau came out first. Say that. Esau came out first. Esau <laughs> came out first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you got Esau sitting right there. And the Bible says that he was red and hairy. Mm -hmm. Now, the this is one of the few times that God describes a baby. Red. So if God describes a baby, you know how we do when people bring you their baby. And you look over in the crib and you say, ooh. When I can't say nothing else, I say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> That's what I'm ugly babies. Don't say that. You shouldn't say a baby's ugly. No. It, when it's real bad, I say, Gee, Christmas. 
I can't give you all my secrets. Now, now we're going to 35. Said, but I saw you back. I'm just teasing. <laughs> why does God? Why does God describe the baby? Why? Take the time to tell us that the baby is born hairy and red. Why? I almost called. Look at the white woman with the red hair. Red alert. On the right. The red woman. Because the significance of the red is important. Really? He, he is red and hairy. Mm. And then the next one comes out, and, and he hasn't been named yet. He is named by what he did. The next one comes out, and uh, as he comes out, he has got Esau by the heel. What does it mean? And he has grasped his heel. The fight continues. It just changed territories. Oh, God, I wish I had that. The fight continues like the fight between good and evil continues. Like it started in heaven, it fell to the earth realm. It just changes territories. See, you got to get used to fighting. We're going to 35. Remember, we're going to 35. Get you used to fight for the fight to be over. Mm -hmm. As soon as you finish this fight, you'll know it's finished by the next fight. The graduation from the first fight is the next fight. We're going to so 35. They pop in the womb. Now they're being born from one world into the next world, and even in the next world, they still fight. I'm waiting for them to get to the nitty gritty. So Lucifer fell from heaven. How the hell did he get to Lucifer? How the hell did this transfer to Lucifer? And the fight continues in the earth realm. Mm, okay. Watch this. Jacob comes out pulling Esau by the heel. He grasped it by the heel. What did it mean? I don't care if we're coming out or not. I'm still pulling at you. I'm still pulling at you. What does it mean? Because evidently you weren't supposed to come out first. Really? What did he say? Was that deep? Was that a deep saying that he said right there? Maybe I missed I'm it. I'm still fighting for my rightful place. Go ahead, TD. Go Through ahead. circumstances, you got the drop on me, and, and you came out first, but I'm still fighting for my rightful place because Look I at the white the woman one. on the right. Look at the Edomite on the right. You might have come out first, but you are not the one. Give it to me. The kingdom of violence. And the violent take it by for y'all ain't ready for me this morning. I don't know what they're gonna do. There are some that. things that are yours, but you gotta fight for it. That's what that means. There are some things that God is gonna give you, but you gotta fight for it. There are some things that God told you is yours, but you gotta fight for it. Cause that evil twin you got is trying to sabotage everything God has for you. You got to fight. Some of y'all got goosebumps now, and he ain't said nothing. Dramatics. Drama. Let me tell all of my Latino brothers and sisters, all uh -oh. my white brothers and sisters, what? there's a saying in our community, what? when a black woman takes off her earrings. That was kind of funny, but I don't know how it, how it relates to the uh, If you are ever arguing with a sister, and she get to fussing and she start pulling off her earrings. Some of you in here right now, you need to pull off your earrings, kick off your cute heels. What is this going to do with Jacob and Esau? Fight. And if you don't grasp this moment, you don't have time to play. You don't have time to chase down rumors. You don't have time to worry about who's cute. You got to. Look at the white woman on the right. Ladies, I'm about to pull my earrings off. That's 35? Okay. So now, we ain't finished yet. We got a little more vomit to go. Y'all just bear with me. The next, we're going to jump to one hour and 10 minutes. And we're going to take it to one hour and 13.55. I'm looking at four minutes. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss nothing in the sermon. So maybe he might break it down after the earring uh, remark somewhere. We did? And all of his children.
And Jacob is over there just cooking. This is the moment. The moment is determined by choice. Not who they liked the best. Not who came out first. Not how they struggled. This is the moment that all of heaven is peeking over the balcony to see the choice. Because the choice determines the change. Nobody knows what he's talking about. You are not going to get to your next destination just by prayer. I hate to mess with you. Esau, Esau, Esau. I hate Esau. to mess with your mind. But prayer will not be enough. It will be my choice. I thought for sure, I thought for sure before I went back and studied the text, I thought for sure that Esau's name changed to Edom from which came the Edomites, which means red. Edomite all I thought orders. it happened at birth, but it didn't. They didn't change his name to Edom, which caused all his descendants to be the Edomites who ended up possessing the territory that we now call Jordan and a little bit of, of, of what is Israel too was their dwelling place. It did not happen at birth. It did not happen at birth. It happened at the bowl. Oh God, the bowl, the bowl of soup, the lentil. When he looked at the red soup and thought it was more valuable than his birthright, when he looked at We're going to the depreciating asset right. and didn't value the appreciating asset, when he looked at the gratification of the moment right. rather than the reality of the process, oh God. when he looked at exciting the crowd as a preacher but not studying at home to know the message. Like you! See, that's what's wrong with where we got right now. We got a lot of people who want to look like what they are not. Like you! They don't want to really do the work. So they wait for somebody else to preach something mm -hmm. so they can take it. They don't want to study because that takes too much time. They don't want to lay out before God and say, Lord, what is your word for my people? They don't want to study. They don't want to lay up before God. Okay. Do you not know I go before God for you? And he gave you this message, grasping the moment. Every Sunday I preach, I listen to them argue on social media. That was for me. No, child, that was for me. Oh, no, you might have thought it was for you. But I swear, Bishop, been living in my house. I haven't been living in your house, but the Holy Ghost has been living in your house. And because I labor for God, God gives me your word. Oh, I got a headache. Anybody got an aspirin? You got an aspirin? I'm getting a headache. We got there? Okay, what's the next time stamp? I had to get through the whole thing. What's the next time stamp? This is the last time stamp. Okay, go to 123. And we're about to close this out. 123 to 125. So we're going to look at two minutes. Three minutes. 123 to 125. This is the end of the sermon now. You don't want to do the work. You'd rather wait till somebody else do it. Harry, Wait a minute, what the hell was that? Go I back, I missed it. What did you say? I didn't get it. I didn't understand what he's talking about. Go ahead, do that again. Oh, he's speaking in tongues? Is that what he's doing? That's what that is? Okay. I thought it was Creole for a second. Hell? I heard the Lord say, I'm going to give you a moment. And what you do with that moment is up to you. Hear ye the word of the Lord. 
God is going to give you a moment. And what you do with that moment is up to you. My subject is grasp the moment. Jacob was a fighter in his mama's belly. He was a fighter in the belly. He was a fighter in the birth. He was a fighter in the bowl. He was a fighter even when God confronted him. He was a fighter all of his life. He wrestled with God. He wrestled with Esau. You have had to fight all of your life. Hear me today. After years of struggle and being tough and sucking it up and dealing with what you got to deal with, God said, I'm about to give you a moment. And if you will grasp that moment, I will open up the windows of heaven oh, God. and pour you out a blessing. Okay, all right, Let, we could get rid of TG, TD. Now, the entire sermon, he deals with the e, Jacob grasping the heel of Esau represents us grasping a moment that comes once in a lifetime. That's not what the message of Jacob and Esau is. Everybody understand that? He never tells us that we are the descendants, the sons and daughters of Jacob, the black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, Native American Indian man, Native American woman. He never reveals that to us. Neither does he reveal that Esau, whose name became Edom, is the father of all Caucasians. Everybody understand that? He does not explain that Genesis 25 is the origin of two major nations in the earth. One, the sons and daughters of God, which is Jacob, followed by the sons and daughters of Satan which is Esau. He never reveals none of those things. Give me 2nd Esdras chapter 6. Who's reading for me? 2nd Esdras. What does it mean when Jacob grabbed the heel of Esau? The Bible explains what it represented. It does not represent grasping the moment in your life. That's not what it's talking about. Sorry. Read that. The book of 2nd Esdras chapter 6. Verse 7. So those of you, I know some sisters be at home watching TD. You're not going to learn nothing from you. It's a feel-good religion, a motivational speech without biblical substance, without spiritual understanding. It makes you feel good. That's it. Smooth things. Where you at, Cap? Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Uh-huh. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So Ezra is asking the angel, when will the end of the world come and when will the new kingdom arrive? That's the question. Read it again. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? When shall the end of times come? Go ahead. Or when shall be the end of the first? The end of the first world, the first kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of it that follows it. And the beginning of it that follows it. Read. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him. Oh, he's referencing Jacob and Esau now. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Now let's see what it represented. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the last ruling Gentile nation on the earth. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. We got next. Does everybody understand that? We got next. He don't reveal that. TD don't understand the scriptures. Talking about he studies for the people. What studying do you do? That was a motivational feel-good speech with no spiritual understanding, no biblical revelation, no spiritual insight at all. Read that again, please. Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. 
So that's what the grasping of the heel represented. From there, give me the book of Obadiah. Let's go to Obadiah. We're going to talk about Esau, father of the Edomites, just for a moment. I'm going to walk us through a little of the history here. This is the prophet Obadiah, given a very small revelation in the Bible, but had a, it reveals many things for the last days. Let's start at verse 1. Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Edom, which means red. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Now, the understanding that he's, his skin complexion is red and he's hairy, that might not be good enough for some of you to say, how do you know so-called white people, Caucasians, are descended of Esau? Well, as we go to the book of Obadiah, there's some more clues here to the red-skinned man and woman. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. An ambassador is sent among the heathen. Come on. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. There's going to come an ambassador who rallies the nations against Edom. Go ahead. Behold. I have made thee small among the heathen. So now Obadiah reveals something. He says regarding the Edomites, God has made them small amongst the heathen. Okay, they're not liked and they're not the largest nation out there. Go ahead. Thou art greatly despised. Nobody really likes the seed of Esau. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou so now he says that Esau is a prideful People. Okay, so far, red, hairy, filled with pride. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Thou that dwellest, thou that lives in the clefts of the rock. When you get a map and you look at the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, hence the term Caucasian. The term Caucasian comes from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's where they lived during the Dark Ages. Prior to that, they lived in Mount Seir, S-E-I-R, which is a range of pointy mountains that look and resemble hair. When you read in the book of Genesis. Read on. So now, wait, 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 wait. He's red. He's hairy. Filled with pride. Comes from the Caucasus Mountains. Terms Caucasian. Go ahead. Whose habitation is high. He says the Edomites like to live in high places. That's why they like to build skyscrapers. Everybody understand that so far? Come on. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? In order to ask that question, who shall bring me down to the ground? That means who can conquer me? What does Esau or Edom have to have? Power. In order to ask that question, who can bring me down to the ground? Edom, the children of Esau must have power over everyone. Everybody understand that so far? Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Hold on. Let's look at it now. Think about it. Red and hairy. Prideful. Lives in the clefts of the rock. Caucasus Mountains. It says, though thou exalt. And, and says, who shall bring me down to the ground? Meaning, who can conquer me? Now it says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. This symbol would be the eagle. In these last days, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, take out a dollar bill. What is the symbol of America? The eagle. What was the symbol of ancient Rome? The eagle. What was the symbol of ancient Greece? The eagle. What was the symbol of ancient France? The eagle. What was the symbol of ancient Britain? The eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, go ahead. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Though thou set thy nest among the stars. Space travel. 1965. When they did the first moon landing. And from there, they have sent satellites far beyond the moon. So it says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Remember in 1965, when they landed on the moon, they said what? The eagle has landed. Why? Because they know the prophecy. They think they're making mockery of the most high God. God's going to make a mockery of them. Everybody understand that? Read. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. God said, when you do that, I'm going to start taking your kingdom down. What does that mean? 
the truth starts coming out more and more to wake up the children of Israel. Read on. If the, so wait a minute. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, so far, what have we got? Red and hairy. Greatly despised. People don't like them. Filled with pride. Lived in the clefts of the rock. That's the Caucasus Mountains. Had power. Who shall bring me down to the ground? Symbol was the eagle. The space travel. I don't know, but you don't get Arab out of that. They don't understand that. You do not get an Arab out of that. That's your friendly neighborhood Caucasian. And it's identifying first and foremost of all of them, America. Let me say it again. Because Edom is a nation. You got French Edomites. You got German Edomites. You got Russian Edomites. Okay? English Edomites. All that we read, when we get to verse 4, that's stipulating America. Because America in these last days, their symbol is the eagle. They're the ones that landed on the moon. They're the ones doing extreme space travel, exploration. Does everyone understand that? So they're pinpointing America first and foremost. Read. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Mm -hmm. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? So now God compares Esau, Edom to thieves. God says a regular thief would have stolen till he stole enough. He said, but not the Edomites, not Esau, not Edom. They take everything. Read. If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? He said even thieves that came and steal grapes, regular thieves would leave some grapes, but not Esau. Esau will take everything. They'll take the vine, the stem. They'll take the earth around Damn. the um, roots of the vine. Okay? So likewise, they take a man's culture, his heritage. He takes everything. Everybody understand that? That's what verse 5 is going into. Read verse 5 again. Verse 5. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Not Esau, though. Esau takes everything from the hooda to the tuda. Go ahead. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? When you examine his hidden things, the thing he kept secret in history, you find out some diabolical S-H that this guy has done. Come on. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. Ah, uh, now the verse 7 is heavy. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. Go ahead. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. So Esau in these last days, remember I mentioned there are a lot of Edomites. You got French Edomites. You got German Edomites. You got Russian English Edomites. You got Polish Edomites, Italian Edomites, Greek Edomites. There's many. But it says all the men of thy confederacy, meaning their allies. Listen to what I'm about to say. They're, all the men of their confederacy, write this down, are their allies. Read that again, verse 7. Verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. Come on. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They're going to turn on this last dominant kingdom. Let me say it again. Them Edomites that are in confederacy with America is going to turn on them. Come on. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. So God is saying this particular group of Edomites is not going to have understanding that the men of his confederacy, his allies, are going to turn on him. Watch this. Give me Revelation 17. Here's the, Bible, here's the prophetic proof. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 16. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, and verse 16. And the ten horns written down. Hold on. And the ten horns. These are the men of his confederacy. The ten horns are also called the ten common markets. Also called the EU, the European Union. And they coupled with NATO. Everybody understand that? The EU and NATO. One deals with the economy. One deals with the military force. But it's the same nations, the ten common markets. It says, and these are the men of his confederacy, his allies. Read verse 16 again. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, uh -huh. 
these shall hate the whore. The whore is America here in this chapter. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So this is revealing in a, a, a metaphor, a parable, that this great red dragon had seven heads and ten horns. Them ten horns is going to turn on the whore that sitteth upon many waters. That's America. The ten horns. And you see, Britain just said, we're getting out of the European Union. We want no parts of it. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. You're going to see other European nations follow suit. And they're going to turn on this kingdom right here. Read that again. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked. Didn't we just read in Obadiah, it says, The men of thy confederacy have deceived thee. They with that were at peace with thee laid a wound under thee. This is the same thing o Revelation is talking about. Go ahead. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Nuclear fire. Watch this. Verse 17. For God had put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So the ten horns, which is the EU, shall support the whore, eat them for a certain amount of time until God's words are fulfilled. Then God's going to have them turn on him. Go ahead. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. That's the United States of America. Which reigneth over the kingdom over the kings of the earth. That's the proof that it's the United States of America. There's no other kingdom on earth that's ruling except America. You got some Israelites say, oh, it's the Vatican. It ain't the Vatican. It's the United States of America. And the EU is going to turn on the United States of America. Let's go back to Obadiah now. And let's go back to verse 7 again. Obadiah verse 7. The book of Obadiah, verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. That's their allies, the European Union. And prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. When it says they that eat thy bread, they're in harmony one with another. They work with one another. They work economically with one another. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee, a trap. They're going to hurt this place. Go ahead. There is none understanding in him. So to him is Edom, the main Edomites here in America. There's none understanding in him. Go ahead. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom? That's why it says there's no understanding. The Edomites here is not going to be able to figure it out or understand that God's going to change the mind of the EU to turn against this place. Go ahead. And understanding out of the Mount of Esau. Come on. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. You see that? Everyone here is going to be cut off by slaughter. And he's going to tell you why in the next verse. Verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. This is the reason. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. T.D. Jakes couldn't understand this. He don't know what's going on in the world today. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Go ahead. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And thou shalt be cut off forever. Does everybody understand that? Does everybody understand that? T.D. don't understand that. T.D. Jakes don't know what's going on. He don't know the plans of the almighty God. Watch this. Give me Isaiah chapter 34. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I forgot this thing right here. Y'all see this thing on the screen? The classical biblical baby names. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Let's look up Edom, Esau. Go to the next page. No, that ain't it. No, 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 that ain't right there. Zoom in. I want the very bottom. In this book, Classical Baby Names, when you go all the way down to the bottom, come up all the way to the bottom. I want all the way down to the bottom. Right? I want, yep, right there. Who, can you read that, Amaziah? Uh, can you up. zoom in closer? Because I need people at home to see that. Right there, right there. According to the he, according to the commentaries no, on he, of interest, of interest, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, Esau is considered a significant character in world history, 
and the forefather of the Roman Empire. See that? Esau is the father of the Roman Empire. That's all your good Italian friends out there. That's all Esau. That's who's in T.D. Jake's audience, clapping their hands, being confused by him. Okay? Watch this. Go to the book of Isaiah. Go to the book of Isaiah. And we're going to start at verse 34. Isaiah chapter 34. Watch this. Hey, hey, anybody got the Zondervan Bible Dictionary? I think uh, What verse you want, Bishop? I didn't call it yet. I want to know who got the Bible Dictionary. Zondervan. You got it? All right. I want, I want, I want to. Okay, you hold it right there because I want you to show it on camera. We got one. We got one. Thank you. Uh, Isaiah 34. Come on with me. Start at verse 1. The book of Isaiah 34, verse 1. Come near, you nations. Come near, you nations. To hear and hearken, ye people. Mm -hmm. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. For the indignation of righteous anger is near upon all nations. Come on. And his fury upon all their armies. And God's fury shall be upon all their armies. Come on. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath utterly destroyed their armies. Go ahead. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. We just read that in Obadiah. They shall be cut off by slaughter. Go ahead. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. That's destruction coming. Watch this. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. When that nuclear bomb hits, that's what it's going into, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Watch the next part. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's that mushroom cloud effect. So God is giving us the visual of nuclear destruction upon the earth, mainly here in America. Go ahead. And all their hosts shall fall down. That's their satellites. That's all up around the hemisphere up there. Their space shuttles. All of that stuff is coming down. That's the stars that you read about that shall fall from heaven. Go ahead. As the leaf falleth from, from, or from the vine, uh -huh. and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Watch this. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Now the question might be, who is Idumea? What is that? Let's look that up. Let's look that up, and I want to get it on the screen. Look up Idumia. Put it on camera. Put the cover of the book up. We got, we got to know what book we're looking at first and foremost. Do y'all see it on the screen? Okay, zoom in. I'm going to get the Bible dictionary first. Go to the Bible dictionary. You got it? Can you put it on the screen? It's on the screen? That ain't it. Come on. I need you to understand this thing. I need to understand what the Bible is talking about. You're getting all goosebumps when T.D. Jakes talks nonsense. Grasp the moment. Could have bought that new car if you grasped the moment. That ain't what the Bible's talking about. What you want on this screen? Yeah, I can't see it. Hey, he wants it on this screen here. Put can y'all see it over there on that screen? Put it on the projector. The projector. It's not on this projector. Oh, you can't get it over here? Put it right here. Okay, switch it to now. Okay, since they see it at, at home, they can see it, the Bible dictionary. Okay, do me a favor. Now go to the internet because I saw you had it up there. Okay, I do me a definition of I do me at dictionary.com. Okay, it's a, read that, Amaziah. Okay. The Esau, the brother of Jacob, Greek, I do me a, I do me a, an ancient region between the Dead Sea and the Gulf of Agaba. Okay, that ain't nothing. On the Bible dictionary, I need somebody to read it for me because I, I need the words because I couldn't hear it. I can see it. I can see it on the Bible dictionary. Okay, put a Bible dictionary back up on the screen, and can you read it? 
It says Idumia, Greek and Roman name for Edom. Idumia, Greek and Roman name for Edom. So, the Bible's telling you that when Christ returns, because you got watch, listen to what I'm about to say. Christians like Jehovah Witnesses, those stupid apologetics like to say that the Edomites were destroyed already. Well, if that's the case, Isaiah 34 says, for, verse 5 says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, which are the Edomites. So either God is crazy or somebody lying. These white people have been lying for centuries, hiding the truth that they're the Edomites. Everybody understand that thing? Christ is coming back to bring them down for judgment. Now watch this. Give me the next book. Give me Dr. William Smith's dictionary. Doc, I want to cover the book. I need the cover of the book. Doc, that ain't it. Dr. William Smith. Dr. William Smith. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, did I send it to y'all? Hold on. Maybe I didn't send it to you. Lava talk. Let me. Hey, you know what? Who got Google? Type it. Put it on the screen. Type in um, Dr. William Smith Dictionary. That would probably be easier. Dr. William Smith Dictionary. Go into images. Let me see images. Go down, go down, go down. Okay, that one right there. Blow that right. Mm -mm. Right there. Click that. Zoom in. This is the book right here. This is the book right here. This is a reprint. This is a reprint. Let's blow it up big. Officer uh, Judge Rail was sharing this with Deacon Ithan, and then Ithan was sharing it with me. So I had to, you know I had to run out and get my book. So y'all see the cover of the book, right? Come on, come on, y'all. What's going on here? Just leave it right there. Y'all see the cover of the book? Dr. William Smith's Dictionary of the Bible. This is a reprint. I have the reprinted version. That's what this one is. Now, let's go out of that. Go inside the book. And I want to look up. No, not that page. Not that. Not that. Not that. Uh, zoom in on that page. Let me look at it. Go down. Bear with me. I'm looking. I'm looking for something. Nope. Go to the next one. Nope. Not that one. Not that one. No. That ain't it. Lava talk. Let me find it. Hey, shalom, 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 fam. Uh, yeah, especially that thing you said about Esau Bishop. You know, like uh, these so-called pastors, I mean, they're not going to tell us anything that, that can wake us up. Uh, you understand? Uh, meaning that, oh, yeah, meaning that get us in the way that to, uh, for our salvation. So their whole philosophy is to keep us just like you went to the club, you know, like you're in a club, you're just having a good time. That's what these churches are. Okay? So now, now with that knowledge that we have now, guess what? Maybe a young man that's been in this troop for a year, two years, you can stand, you know what I mean? You will make, uh, uh, what's that dude named TV Jake look yeah. stupid? Because he is stupid. You understand? With that type of philosophy, man, then... For a minute, I'm listening to these things. I'm like thinking that, do, do people really buy that? <laughs> Here we go, Lava. Go ahead. This is the page inside the book we just saw. Oh, uh, Captain Amazai, can you read this for us? Yes, sir. I want you all to pay close attention to what the scholars wrote. This is a reprint of a very old book. Watch what they say. The book of Obadiah is a favorite study of the modern Jews. The modern Jews, they put the word modern in so you know it's talking about white folks today. Go ahead. It is here especially that they read the future fate of their own nation and of the Christians. So they know that they are what? 
the Edomites. They know that they are the Edomites. These modern Jews and these Christians, they know they're the Edomites. It's our people who've been deceived by the likes of brothers like T.D. Jakes and the Creflos and the Juanita Bynums. Bynums. Read it again. The book of Obadiah is a favorite study of the modern Jews. It is here especially that they read the future fate of their own nation and of the Christians. So modern Jews, modern Jews and the Christians know that they are the Edomites. This is in their book, their records. Okay? Jump down to the very bottom. I want the last... Where it says the Jews? Uh, right after Joel 3, verse 19. See, in parentheses, at the very bottom. The okay. fourth sentence. Listen good. Uh, the Jews... No, it says on Joel, on Joel 3, verse 19. Oh, oh, yes, I see it. On Joel 3, verse 19. says that Julius Caesar was an Idumian. Julius Caesar was an Idumian. The scholars know, remember we just read in the baby book, it said Esau was the father of the Roman Empire. The scholars know that modern, these Caucasians are Idumians, are Edomites. This secret has been kept from our people for centuries. Does everybody understand that thing? All right, give me the next one. Give me the next article. So Julius Caesar was an Idumian, an Edomite. The scholars know this thing. Give me the article on Rome, the 12 Rome, Roman Caesars. The Julio emperors. It says a look at the lives of the first 12 Roman emperors. Write this down. The 12 Roman emperors are the 12 feathers that you read about in 2nd Ezra chapter 11 and chapter 12. Write that down. The 12 Roman emperors are the 12 feathers that you read about in 2nd Ezra chapter 11 and chapter 12. Jump, go down. Let's look at the first one. Name the first one. Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was the first of the 12 feathers. Now watch this. Go to 2nd Ezra. We're going to stay right there for a second. 2nd Ezra. Let's start at verse 12. I'm going to start. I'm going to jump back to chapter 11, but I want to start with 12. Chapter 12, okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 10 through 16. 2nd Ezra chapter 12, verse 10. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle. Stop. Remember what you read in the book of Obadiah. We call Edom, though thou exalt thyself as what? The eagle. So now here, Ezra is talking about the last great empire on earth. This symbol would be the eagle. Read that again. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. Stop right there. Let's go over to Daniel to see what Ezra is making reference to. Go to Daniel 7, verse 7. And do me a favor. Go to Google. I want you to hold out. We're coming back here. Go to Google and type in the four beasts of Daniel 7. The four beasts of Daniel 7. This is what Christians do. And go into images. Yeah, go into images. Yeah, and, and do the one the one on the left. You could do the one on the left. I don't know. Get no pick. In, in, just leave it. Leave it right there. Leave it right there. The four beasts. The first empire that you read about in Daniel seven was Babylon. That's represented by the lion. The second great kingdom on earth was Persian and Mede, followed which is the bear, which had the ribs in its mouth. The third after Persian Media was the Greeks, symbolized by the leopard with four heads and four wings. 
And the fourth one, which is the last and greatest, they got a dinosaur. Y'all see that? Go to Daniel 7, verse 7. Please leave that up there. Leave that up there. We got to show you how the deceit and the deception of world Jewry, modern Jews, and these so called Christians. Read that. Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, the fourth beast. The fourth beast, the fourth kingdom. Dreadful and terrible. Dreadful and terrible. And strong exceedingly. And strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Mm. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. It had ten horns. Remember we read about ten horns where? In Revelation 17. About the ten horns shall hate the whore and turn on her. So this last kingdom, it said it had ten horns. Go ahead. Verse 8. I no, that's a jump over to verse 19. Verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. So Daniel wants to know the truth of this fourth beast, this fourth mighty empire, this last mighty empire on the earth. Go ahead. Which was diverse from all the others. Which was diverse from all the others. Exceeding dreadful. It was exceeding dreadful. Whose teeth were of iron. His teeth were of iron. And his nails of brass. And his nails were of brass. Which devoured. Break in pieces and stamp the residue with his feet. Go ahead. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. Three even... great empires fell with this last kingdom. That's the Spanish, the French, and the British. That's your Spanish American War. That's your French American War and the War of Independence between Britain and America. Let's go back to, now you notice he didn't give the animal symbol. But when we go to 2nd Ezra 12 again, let's go back there. Or oh, we know that what Daniel saw, it was exceeding dreadful. Verse 10 again, Bishop. Uh, yes, sir. Verse 2nd Ezra chapter 12, verse 10. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. So now the angel reveals it to Esdras. He said that vision that Daniel had that he did not understand, that last animal symbol is the eagle. That's your United States of America, an extension of Rome. Go ahead. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore now I declare it unto thee. So he said the Lord didn't reveal to Daniel the animal symbol of this last ruling empire. But now you and I know it's the eagle. It's not, look at these, look, 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 look at the picture. This is what Christians do in their books. One got a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and one got a Stegosaurus. The Bible says it's the eagle. The last kingdom on earth symbol would be the eagle. We're going to read down to verse uh, 16. Come on. Verse 13. Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon earth, and it, shall, it, and it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. In the same shall twelve kings reign, one after another. Now you see this? In the same shall twelve kings reign. Let's go back now, uh, the article. Y'all with me? Twelve kings shall reign. Let's put that article back up. That ain't it. Go to the top again. To the top of this article. A look at the lives of the first 12 Roman emperors. Go down now. The first one is Julius Caesar. What race was Julius Caesar? Now we know. He's a what? An Edomite. His whole thing is about Esau. What verse you at, Captain? I'm at verse 14 now. Come on. Verse 14. In the same shall 12 kings reign, one after another. Whereof the second shall begin to reign. So here in the 12th chapter, he talks about the second feather. It says, in the same shall 12 kings reign, one after another, whereof the second shall begin to reign. Go ahead. And shall have more time than any of the 12. So the second feather would have a longer time than any of the others. Let's see who the second one was. Go up. Who's the second one? 
Come on. No, God. Come on, Atlanta. The second one, do y'all stop, stop. Right there, number two. Who's it, Captain? Augustus. Octavius Augustus. That's Augustus Caesar. Everybody see that? Now watch this. Let's go to chapter 11. Second Ezra chapter 11, chapter before it. Let's start at verse 12. Second Ezra chapter 11. Wait, hold on. Go up to the first one again. Go up. Okay. The first one is Julius Caesar. Go up a little bit so I can see. First one. No, no. Come on. Come on. Raise it. Julius Caesar followed by Octavian, which is Augustus Caesar. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 12 and 13. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 12. And I looked and behold, on the right side, there arose one feather and reigned over all the earth. Write this down. Julius Caesar. Go ahead. And so it was that when it rained, the end of it came. It di he died. And the place thereof appeared no more. Mm -hmm. So the next following stood up and reigned and had a great time. So the second one came up, which is who? Octavian. That's Augustus Caesar. These are all Edomites. These are all Idumians. Everybody with me so far? So how come our brother T.D. Jakes and other Christians, Christian ministers, either don't know this or won't reveal this information to our people? Let's go to Isaiah 28. Let's go to Isaiah 28. And we're going to read start at verse 14. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord. Ye scornful men that rule this people which is in, it, in Jerusalem. So now the Lord's addressing the leaders of the Israelites. You scornful men, he's saying. Go ahead. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. So what is he saying here prophetically? The Lord is saying that the leaders of our people, these black and Latino leaders, have made a covenant. The word covenant means an agreement. With death and hell are they at agreement. Read that again. Verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. Meaning the conditions of the Israelites that we're in, a, a, a state of poverty, a state of ignorance, our people, the leaders of our people are in total agreement with it. Why? Because they're getting paid. They're the modern-day taskmasters. Go ahead. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. These leaders, these ministers say when judgment shall come, shall pass through. Go ahead. It shall not come unto us. It ain't going to happen. Nothing going to happen to us. Why? For we have made lies our refuge. That's why they're so busy teaching lie after lie after lie. So much that they believe the lies. That's why in Thessalonians, remember it says, the Lord shall send them strong delusions that they should what? Believe a lie. That's why these Christian ministers don't bring out this information. Won't reveal the truth to us. Come on. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. That's why they're motivational speakers. That's why a lot of women flock there. Because they don't want knowledge and understanding. They want to feel good religion. They want goosebumps on their arms. They want to feel all warm and tingly inside. But the Lord's raising up an elect, both of men and women, that want the truth and nothing but the truth. So help them, God. Read. Verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Now this is a prophetic of Christ coming. He said Christ is a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, meaning what? Christ is the leader. He is the commander. Can you find, hey, give me that in Isaiah, it might be 50-something where he says he's our commander. 55, thank you. Let me show you that. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. A leader 
and commander to the people. Christ is the leader. Christ is the commander. So that's what that, let's go back to chapter 28, what we were reading about in verse 16. Isaiah 28, verse 16 again. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Hey, find me that in Luke 23, I think it is. Luke 23, it might be 35. I just see a little number there. Let me see what that says. It might be in uh, the book of Peter, actually, where it says uh, he's a, a stone. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, sir. I got you. Let's go to First Peter's 2, and I think verse 6. Yes. Uh, verse 5. First Peter's 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. See that? He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. If you want to know, want to know why certain Israelites never hit the street, it's because they really don't believe in the Son of the Most High. I don't care if they call him... Uh, Yahshua, Yehoshua, they don't believe. That's why they stay indoors on a computer. They're afraid to face the people and prophesy. Let's go back to Isaiah 28 in verse 16. Book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. This is about Christ. Go ahead. A tried stone. A tried stone. A precious cornerstone. You know what's amazing? Remember what we read in Peter. It says, and ye also as what? Lively stones. What? Meaning what? We got to be in that image of Christ. All of us must be in this image of Christ. Go ahead. A sure foundation. Mm -hmm. He that believeth shall not make haste. Meaning shall not be confounded. That's what we read in Peter. It made it clear. Go ahead. Verse 17, judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. See that? The destruction shall sweep away the refuge of lies. All the lies of these Christian ministers shall be wet, swept away. Every last lie. God don't care how good it makes you feel. I just want to feel warm and tingly. God don't give a daggone about that. He's going to sweep it away with destruction. Go ahead. And the water shall overflow the hiding place. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they hide themselves in lies. Go ahead. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement that you made with, this, with these Edomite nations, that we would always be in death and hell. Go ahead. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. It shall not stand. No matter what they do to the prophets, what they do to the sons and daughters of God, God has prophesied that agreement shall not stand. Israelites are on the rise. Y'all understand that? That's right. Come on. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. God said, I'm going to kill you with them lies. Go ahead. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. They're not going to escape. Go ahead. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. Right, because as we prophesy and teach this word it's a vexation not to us but to the nations and to the blacks and latinos who have made an agreement with death and hell it's a vexation to them because why they've been teaching us nothing but motivational speakers feel good religions money and prosperity the most High says here it shall be a vexation only to understand the report so now that we're giving forth the understanding of Genesis 25, giving forth the understanding of the book of Obadiah, giving the understanding of the last world empire, that's this empire that we're living in right now today. Give me Isaiah 29, 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, 
For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. Right, that's how people in these Christian churches, these Christian religions. And with their lips do honor me. They say, I love Jesus. I love the Lord. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. They won't do nothing this Bible says. Not one law. Not one commandment. Go ahead. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. The white man. I do me Eat them. That's who T.D. Jakes learned from. That's who Creflo learned from. I don't care what black scholar, black or Latin you got out there. These Christians, they learned from the so-called white man. How do we know that? There was laws implicated, induced in society. We were forbidden to what? Read and write. If we could not read and write, then who taught us? Christ was a European. Who taught us that? Who taught us Christ was born on December 25th? Who taught us about Mother's Day? And Father's Day and Cat Day and Dog Day. The so-called white man taught us these things. And these black and Latin Christian ministers carry it on to this day. That's what it means. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. The so-called white man. Give me Isaiah 65 verse 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 2. 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. We are not rebellious people, you blacks and Latinos. We are the rebellious people. How does the Lord stretch out his hand to them all day? He sends us out on the street. He sends us out through the uh, internet to reach our people. Go ahead. Which walketh in a way that was not good. They're walking in the ways of modern day Christianity, modern day Judaism, modern day Islam. The Lord said that ways, those ways are not good. Go ahead. After their own thoughts. After their own thoughts. Whatever they think, whatever they feel, whatever they say, they do it. God says that's the way which is not good. After their own thoughts. From there, Matthew 15 and 3. Matthew 15, verse 3. All these Christian churches teach nothing but traditions that were passed down from the time of slavery. Matthew. And it's become tradition today. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? You see that? When you follow the traditions of men, which have been taught by the precepts of men, you transgress the commandments of God. Why? Because they say you don't have to keep God's commandments. It's not required today. Read it again. B but he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So to hear the voice of God, you must leave the Christian church. You can't hear the understanding of the Lord sitting in there with goosebumps, feeling tingly and warm inside when we try to bring the truth to you. You don't want to hear it. You got to come out of those churches to hear the understanding for God to open your spiritual ears. From there, give me John 9, 22. The book of John, chapter 9, verse 22. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Watch this. These words, this is about the man that was, about to, that was healed. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Watch this. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Now that's a good thing. But many of our people fear that thing. Why? Because just like then, as is today, the churches are institutions of so-called respect. It's a respectable religion where you feel good. No matter what nation you are, you can go in and feel good. The Pharisees said if anybody confessed the true Christ, they would be cast out. So likewise today, when you confess the true Messiah, whose hair was white like wool, whose eyes were like flames of fire, whose feet were like br brass burned in a furnace, who died for the nation of Israel, and we are who? The Israelites. You're cast out. So just like back then, so is it today. Our people were afraid to confess the true Christ. Read on. Verse 23. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. His parents didn't want to confess that Christ healed him. They said, ask our son. Ask him. He can speak for himself. Come on. Then again called they the man that was blind. 
and said unto him, Give God the praise. Notice we, how they come to him. Give God the praise, brother. Go ahead. We know that this man is a sinner. We know that this black Messiah here, so-called Messiah, he's a sinner. This so-called Yahweh Shai, Jesus Christ, he's a sinner. Go ahead. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. He said, one thing I do know, that man healed me. Go ahead. Then said they to him again, what did he to thee? He opened he thine eyes. He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore, see that? Their spiritual ears was closed. They couldn't understand nothing the man was saying. The man said, Christ healed me. He's the anointed Savior. Read that again. What verse you at? Verse 27, sir. Go ahead. He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Could, shall I repeat myself again? Did I stutter? Go ahead. Will ye also be his disciples? Will you be his disciple? Will you follow? Will you be a student of the true Christ? Go ahead. Then they reviled him. Then they hated him. And what? And said, Thou art his disciple. You're his disciple. Go ahead. But we are Moses' disciple. We follow Moses. Come on. We know that God spake unto Moses. We know that God spake to Moses. As for this fellow. As for this Jesus, this, this Christ. We know not from whence he is. We don't know this guy. We don't know where he's from. Go ahead. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing? Just notice how you got to see his, his attitude. He hears this and says, Why? This is a marvelous. He's being sarcastic now. He says, well, herein is a marvelous thing. Go ahead. That you know not from whence he is. You are the leaders of Israel, and you don't know from whence this man comes. Go ahead. And yet he hath opened mine eyes. And yet this man opened my eyes. Go ahead. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Now we know, he, he continues, God don't hear sinners. Go ahead. But if any man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. So what was the man saying? This man healed me with the power of God. He ain't no sinner, as you accused him of being, because I would not have been able to receive my sight. So the man was cutting him in his spirit. Go ahead. Verse 32. Since the world began. Now this is the man still continuing. He ain't finished with them yet. Since the world began. Was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? He says, since the time of Genesis chapter 1, have you ever read about a man who was born blind receiving his sight? Go ahead. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. See that? He said, if this man was not sin of God, he couldn't do nothing. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, thou was altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? They said, you a sinner. You trying to teach us now? Them brother was cutting them deep. Go ahead. And they cast him out. You see that? They cast him out of the church. Here we are today now. Many brothers and many sisters are afraid to go through this thing here. By confessing that they're the Israelites, that Christ is of the tribe of Judah, our people, our commander, our leader, they're afraid to be cast out of the church. That's why his parents didn't want to say nothing. They said, let him speak for himself. This brother wasn't afraid. He said, I'm going to stand up for righteousness. You niggas ain't SH. That's what he was telling them. Y'all don't know what you think you claim to know. And they cast them out. We can't be afraid of being cast out of the church. And this is for you brothers and sisters at home who still go to Sunday school, who's sitting online right now, going to go to church tomorrow, afraid to speak up for the truth, for the true Messiah, for the true commander, the true chief, the true That's and right. true foundation, you're afraid. Don't be afraid no more. If they cast you out, they cast you out. They've marked themselves. From there, give me John 12, verse 42. The book of John, chapter 12, and verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. See that? Many of the chief rulers believed on Christ, but... But... Because of the Pharisees. But because of the Pharisees. They did not confess him. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. See that? The synagogues are like our modern day churches. Places of quote unquote honor. Prestige. Well established. For some of them almost a hundred years now. You don't want to be thrown out of there. 
You know that our family been in this church all our lives. Good times. Good times. You're going to get us thrown out with this old black Jesus stuff? With this Israelite stuff? <laughs> yeah, mom. Yeah, dad. We're the Israelites. Don't be afraid to be cast out. Don't be afraid. Give me John 16 and 2. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Like the apostle who became known as Paul. When people were being cast out, he was putting them to death. Believe it or not, some of these greatest ministers that you see. We've gone to many of their churches and they called the police on us. I remember a couple of years back, I believe it was me, Deacon Malachi. We were at uh, Creflo's church, and they got the buses. Where were we at? It was in Chicago, right? Say it on the mic so people can hear you. We went, it's a couple of church we went to. You know, in Chicago, we went over there, and we was teaching against, we was teaching, and they, they got buses, block us out. They called the cops for us to chase us and, and to, to, to get rid of us. You know, also in, in Atlanta, you remember Malachi? This was like, what, like eight years ago, we went to Criffalo Dollar Church out here in Atlanta, and they, they called the cops on us. They, 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 chased us, they chased us away, even though we wasn't on their property, we wasn't public property, they got rid of us. They said, we can't allow these dudes to come around here and push that doctrine. They said, you know what, let's take the... Let's take the ID so if they even come back, we just get them arrested one time. We're like, we ain't giving you all no ID. We out. You know, you remember that? <laughs> this was like eight years ago in Atlanta. But the, but the Christian pastors, they know what time it is. That's why when you, 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 um, you had, you had um, T.D. Jakes, he was talking that crap the other day about potato chips preacher. You remember that crap? Because... The truth that we are teaching is affecting the church. You know, it's affecting them, man. People is coming and asking them questions. You know, people coming, when, when, when people watch our classes online, you know, they going back to the pastor, to their pastor and asking their pastor, pastor, but this, 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 this um, scripture that you teach me, it's, it's not right. I, I, I was on YouTube and these guys, they, they break it down a different way. You know, pastor, teach me. I'm, you know, that's what they doing, and and they are questioning the pastor. So no, a lot of brothers and sisters is in the Christian church, and they are, a lot of you all learning that you all Israel, and you all scared to leave. But you all got to make that move, man. That's right. Got to make that move. Make that move right now, baby. Come on, give me. Some of y'all don't know what a song I'm going to. Give me the next article. Give me the book. I want to cover the next book. Cover. The cover. The cover. That's not a cover. Thank you, Abby. Right there. Let's zoom in on that. Let's zoom in on that. The top. Let's see the top. Read that, Amaziah. Biblical and Theological Dictionary. Read. What the hell? Explanatory. Explanatory of the history, manners, and customs of the Jews. And I don't know what that word. Neighboring, Neighboring. nations. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Can you zoom in a little more, please? With an account of the most remarkable places and persons mentioned in sacred scripture. An exposition of the principal doctrines of Christianity and notices of Jewish and Christian sects and heresies by Richard Watson. Let's go to the inside page now. I believe right there. Let's start there. Let's zoom in. See the yellow? I had to tell them to highlight it. Let's zoom. I want that whole bottom part. You got the bottom F. cut off. We don't need the top. I need the bottom. Yes. We're going to start right there. Right, right after the highlight. Right. Zoom in a little bit, please. Many of the discourses were preached in camps and courts. You see, now they're talking about the prophets. You got these Israelites today that say, some of them, Camps are evil. It's not biblical. Well, then how come the scholars knew the prophets went out in camps? Read it again. Many of the discourses were preached in camps and courts, in streets, 
schools, cities, villages, sometimes with great composure and coolness. At other times, with vehement action and rapturous energy, sometimes in a plain Blunt. Blunt style. Some brothers teach plain, some in a plain blunt style. Go ahead. At other times, in all the magnificent, magnificent pomp of Eastern allegory, mm -hmm. on some occasions, the preachers appeared in public with visible signs. You see that? So this is an old dictionary. Damn. They were talking about the prophets that went on the street. They went out with public signs. Why do I got to have signs? That's not in the Bible. You've never read Ezekiel 37, have you? Read. With implements of war, with the yokes of slavery, or something adapted to their subject. Right, because the prophets were prophesying we were going into slavery. So they were brought these instruments out with them. Go ahead. They gave lectures on these. On these. Held them up to view. Girded them on, broke, broke, and broke them in pieces. Can you zoom in a little bit more? Rent their garments, rolled in the dust, and, in, in, and endeavored by all the... Let's go over to the next page. You got to go to the next, go to the next page. Go to the next page. Next page. Next page. They didn't give it to you? Let me see. Or well, I didn't give it to you. Bear with me, bear with me. Yeah, yeah. When when you're looking at uh here what cop just read, that to showing you our people, especially brothers who's behind the camera, uh not behind their computer while they're at home, is a spirit of fear. That's why they don't want to hit the street. Because they know, they know. Either they know or they just have a spirit of fear on them. That's why they hit the street. That's why they, they despise us who come out of the street and preaching the same thing to our people. I sent it to Netshemiah. Feel like until I get that thing yep. going. It's the same thing. So they talk evil of us who went outside just to show unto our people that we've been, uh, uh, we been here. Guess what? These guys, even though with that uh, pictures we put out, they're saying that these are idols, these are uh, 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 witchcraft. Man, but we just read about <laughs> historians put that thing in. That's how our forefather went down, just like this. Exactly. Let's read the top of that. Uh, zoom in, please. These men were highly... Wait, wait, wait. Go up to the top. Go ahead. Methods. Methods they could devise agreeably to the customs of their country to impress the minds of their auditors with the nature and importance of their doctrines. So the prophets went out and taught using signs. They brought many things to bring the Bible alive. Some taught very blunt and some did not. Okay, everybody understand that. So now this is an old dictionary and they knew that. So what they're seeing today, let me show you something. Watch this. Give me Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13. The book of Acts. Actually, four. you know what I want? Let me see. John 7. Go to John 7. Let me look at verse. Uh, bear with me. I'm looking. I'm here now. Where's the verse that says, how know if this man letters? Oh, 16. 16. That's what I want. No, 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 no. 15. 15. Start at 14. Start at 14. John, John chapter seven. To 7, verse 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Uh -huh. And the Jews marveled, saying, how know this man letters? How does he know the prophets? That's the letters he's making reference to. How does Christ, this man Christ, know about the prophets, the scriptures, the way he does? Go ahead. Having never learned. He never said in our schools of thought. Jesus answered wait, them. Wait, 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 wait. He didn't sit in our schools of education. He didn't sit out in our schools of theology. How does Christ know the letters of the prophets? Give me the one in Acts where it says Paul. Who knows what that one is? Because just on the top of my head. It said he sat and learned at the feet of Gamaliel. 
I forgot. Somebody find me that. Where we going? Acts where, 22? And what verse? Oh, three. I got it. Verse three. Yes. Acts chapter 2, 22. Acts chapter 22, verse 3. Now, this is about the school. Listen good. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus. This is the Apostle Paul. Go ahead. A city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manners of the laws of the fathers, and was zealous towards God, as ye all are this day. So, Paul learned at the feet of Gamaliel. You can read about him in the, in the four Gospels, okay? But Christ, himself, he did not go to these schools of learning. Give me that in Acts 13. Acts 13 and verse 1. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called nigger. That's black. They pronounce it Niger today. That and, means black, Latin word. Watch, but that ain't the part we want. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manahan, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Y'all see that? That's what I wanted. Which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. They went to schools of learning. These men were well educated here. Saul went to these schools with Herod, okay? Schools of learning, but Christ did not. Go back to John 7 so we can read about that again. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 15, verse 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught, and the Jews marveled, saying, How know this man letters having never learned? He didn't sit in our schools of learning. So now watch this. Give me Acts 4.13 about the apostles. This is before Paul came. Paul was well educated, but he hadn't, he hadn't got cold yet. Watch what they say. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. See they, that? They were unlearned and ignorant. Meaning what? They could tell by the way they was teaching. They were not too articulate. Why? Because they did not go to the schools of theology. Go ahead. They marveled. They marveled. They were shocked at the understanding these men had. Go ahead. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You see that? And that's what they say about us. This is what the scholars say about us. How do these guys know this stuff? They didn't go to our schools of theology. You got brothers and sisters. I say that I spent thousands of thousands right. of dollars in school to learn the little bit I know. I come down the street and I hear this. I never learned this stuff here. I remember the elder That's Masha right. said that he had graduated from theology school when he bumped into Bivens. He said his four years of education was nothing compared to that, what they were called an unlearned and ignorant man. He said when he heard the scriptures come out the way, this brother was breaking it down. He said he knew he'd been lied to. He said, I'm joining this man here. He said he, he never sat that church up there. He was set out, set out to set up. So likewise with many of us in here today. Some of y'all went to these dumb theology schools, schools of deceit, cemetery schools, schools of the dead. Go to Malachi 4 and 4. Malachi chapter 4. Yes, Malachi 4 and 4. Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. I wanted to start there because, brothers, this is the last book of the Old Testament, allegedly. He said, remember, and this was in the Persian captivity. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with statutes and judgments. Read. Behold. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the prophecy is, I'm not leaving you Israelites alone. I'm going to send Elijah the prophet. I know you cast down in ignorance. You think you Negroes and Latinos, but I've got a plan to wake you up. 
I'm going to send Elijah. Go ahead. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. He's going to turn the hearts of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to our fathers, to the children. To the, we are the children. He's going to wake us up to our nationality. Go ahead. And the heart of the children. Meaning our minds. To their fathers. Your fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What? We're not African-American. We're not Puerto Rican. We're not Native. No! You're the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. That's the job Elijah had. And while Elijah was teaching us that testimony, he was doing what? Teaching the law. Remember you the law of Moses. You got into this mess because we broke the law. Go ahead. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Watch this. Proverbs 1 and 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. You see that? That's what Elijah was doing. Elijah was in the streets. Elijah was not held up inside some room on the internet, on the computer, on Facebook. He was in the streets. This is why we teach you, man, you got to hit the streets. That's why we showed you with the old dictionaries. The prophets did what? Hit the streets. Why? Because in order to hear the voice of God, you're going to hear it in the streets. Read that again. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. So when you see these men and women on Facebook, Instagram, running their mouth, ignore them. Yes, Click their videos and you see they have none of them in the streets. They do not have the spirit of God. The spirit of the Lord has not come down upon them at all. Read it again. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? He's talking to blacks and Hispanics, Native American. How long, you simple ones, you stupid people? Wake up! Go ahead. And the scorners delight in their scorning. See that? And the scorners delight in their scorning. Go ahead. And fools hate knowledge. I, I, I don't want to hear that knowledge of God. I just want to feel good. I want to feel tingly inside. That's what they do. That's what many of our people do. Why? Because in the Christian churches, you cannot hear the word of God. You cannot hear the truth with understanding. Your spiritual eyes and spiritual ears are closed. Why? Because you're so busy feeling warm and tingly. Go ahead. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my law. That's God's reproof. Turn you at my laws, my commandments. Go ahead. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. If you turn towards God's laws, his commandments, the Lord said, I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. Read that verse again. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. That's when you start to get understanding. When you turn towards God's reproof. That's when you get the Holy Spirit endowed within you. Everybody understand that? You can't get the Holy Spirit set up in these Christian churches, feeling warm and tingly based upon lie after lie after lie. From there, Isaiah 13, 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. This is still in the streets. Lift ye up the Bible upon the high mountain, the highest government on the planet Earth. That's America. God is commanding us to lift ye up the Bible. Exalt that. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto them. Lift your voices. Raise your voices. Go ahead. Shake the hand. And when you're shaking your hand, you're telling somebody off. Go ahead. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. You see that? The Lord is telling us, we got to bug the people so much with the word of God, they get sick of us. And they're going to go to the gates of the nobles. They're going to go to your mayors. Go to the governors. Go to the presidents. Go to the Christian leaders. That's what that, Why do you think T.D. Jakes want to talk about Genesis 25? Because his congregants. T.D., uh, I'm looking at videos, and they're going over Genesis 25. Can you explain what that's talking? Okay, I'm going to go. Spirit is upon me to bring out the word of the Lord. 
You gotta grasp the moment. Oh, is that what that's talking about? That's what that's talking about. That ain't what that's talking about. That's why they're doing that. They're going into the gates of the nobles saying, hey, you hear these Israelites out there? They're bringing out understanding you've never brought out. Oh. Give me Revelation 7 and 4. The book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there was sealed and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. That's the number the Lord is looking for of the leaders. That ain't all Israel. That's just the leading body. He said, I need them sealed with this understanding. Twelve thousand of each of the twelve tribes of Israel. To cover this globe and teach the gospel and raise up that great number in verse 9. Read that verse 9. Verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. Our people like to forget about the slave trade, but when we were scattered in all nations, and in all these nations we learned their various tongues. They read verse 9 and go, look, everybody. It ain't everybody. That's talking about the Israelites. Give me that in Acts 2 and 5. We're coming right back there. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So out of every nation. How did they get in every nation? It's called slavery. Our people have been taught to ignore the history we've gone through that we suffered. Like we don't exist. But they'll talk about World War II. Every year you got a new daggone stinking rat movie about World War II. And you talk about our history. Oh, you forget about that. Ignore it like it never happened. So when you do that, your spiritual eyes are closed when you read about all nations. Give me that in Deuteronomy 427. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. See that? That's the prophecy. The Lord shall scatter you among. That's called slavery. Go ahead. And ye shall be left few in number. But they were killing us by the millions. Go ahead. Among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. See that? Let's go back to Revelation 7 and 9. The Christian church is the biggest cult on earth. Yep. But they're going to call us the bad guys. We're the cult. We're bringing nothing out but the truth of Almighty God. Read that again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations. Why? Because we were scattered in all nations. Acts 2 and 5, Deuteronomy 4, 27, James 1 and 1, so forth and so on. Go ahead. And kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Come Verse on. 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Who are these that came out of all nations and kindreds and tongues? Go ahead. And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they that came out of slavery. That's what that's talking about. Go back to Deuteronomy 4. Always love to ignore our history like we never existed. We are of, of no consequence in the earth. The Bible says Esau is the end of the world. But Jacob, the Israelites, are the beginning of it to come after. Deuteronomy 4, 27, showing you the same thing that Revelation 7 says. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number. Because they were killing us. Go ahead. Among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. Read. And there ye shall serve gods. See there? And there ye shall serve gods. We're going to serve Buddha. 
white image of Jesus, uh, Vishnan, Vishnu, the Kaaba stone, so forth and so on. Go ahead. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. No matter what land we are scattered in. He says, but, this is the prophecy, but if from thence, meaning whatever land you're in, ye, the, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Go ahead. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. Thou shalt find him. Go ahead. If thou seek him with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. Remember he said he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. Saying the same thing. We're going to wake up to the truth that we're the Israelites. And keep the commandments. Come on. Verse 30. When thou art in tribulation. When thou art in tribulation. When you're in slavery. That's what he's talking about. We can't ignore it. The verse above it told you. We're going to serve other gods in these lands. When thou art in tribulation. That's the same thing John the Revelator said. About tribulation. Read that again. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. Even when? In the latter days. Are we not living in the latter days? These are the latter days. Go ahead. If thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is merciful God, he will not forsake he thee. He will not forsake us. Neither destroy he thee. He will not destroy us. Nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. Neither will he forget the agreement that he made with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Give me John 7 and 1. We're almost done. So here we are in the Feast of Tabernacles. John chapter. Let's give the Lord a hand. We thank the Lord for allowing us to wake up. Watch this, John 7 and 1. John chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. The Jews sought to kill him. Go ahead. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Do you see that? Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. You can read about that in Leviticus 23, 34. So... They were keeping it. Jump over to verse 10. John 7, verse 10. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast. What feast? The feast of tabernacles. Go ahead. Not openly, but as it were in secret. Why? Because the Jews wanted to kill the Savior. Go ahead. Then the Jews sought him at the feast. What feast? The feast of tabernacles. Come on. And said, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. So there was a divide amongst some Israelites. Go ahead. Howbeit, no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Our people were afraid of the Jews. So they didn't want to confess the black Messiah openly. Go ahead. Now, amid, about the midst of the feast. And what feast? The feast of tabernacles. Go ahead. Jesus went up into the temple and taught. So on a feast of tabernacles, Christ went into the temple and taught. Go ahead. And the Jews marveled, saying, "He knoweth, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? How knoweth this man the letters of the prophets, having never learned? Come on. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. See that? Christ said, I didn't come down here and make up my own doctrine. What I teach you, I learned of my father. You can read about that from the time of Genesis. Everybody understand that thing? So let me show you something. Let me show you something. This is what our people tend to do. When you come out of these Christian religions, you start to learn about the righteousness of the Most High God. You remember the laws of Moses that was given in Horeb. Then you come in this truth and you learn that you're the Israelites. You learn the laws and the testimony. Then for some ungodly reason, you get offended, some of you, men and women. You get offended because the Lord allows something to come through here to try you. Now you leave. And like every, we always make this statement. You learn this truth here. When you leave, the Most High going to judge you. Why? Because there's no one who has left this truth 
and kept this gospel being taught. They've all resorted to some form of heresy and Christianity. I'm going to show you what I mean. Put the, uh, put the snapshot on the screen of the YouTube page. Let me show you. I'm going to show you. I'm sure I ain't making this up. Did Christ keep the Feast of Tabernacles? Yes. Sir. All right. Now, y'all remember our sister. This was a video just put up. Feast of Tabernacles, Fall 28. They put up last year's Feast of Tabernacles. House of Bezalel set up Zemira Israel. Let's go down to the description comment. Let's re oh, God. go down to the description. Go down. Mm -hmm. Read that, Amaziah. Hope September 24th. So I didn't make this up. Hope this inspires you to go out and camp and experience nature. Not only on the Feast of Tabernacles, because it is not required under Christ. You see this? It is not required. What scripture says the Feast of Tabernacles is not required? Every time men and women leave this truth, they go back to some form of her heretic Christian doctrine. You don't have to do it. You don't have to keep the commandments. It's, it's like, uh, what's that terminology? It's like a science. It always happens. We're not making it up. So when we make statements like you leave this truth, the Lord going to judge you and deal with you, we're not saying it out of arrogance. We've seen it time after time. They go back into the world. They, they reject the commandments of God. You don't, it's not required no more. You don't got to do that. And they never give you a scripture that says that. But they all do it, men and women, every last one of them. Yeah, they don't acknowledge that soon you left outside that door, <laughs> you know I mean, you didn't leave with their spirit. Man. We keep it within. So when you, divide, when you decide to live, the spirit did not leave with you. You leave it where the, where the spirit was. You understand? That's why when you're dealing with stuff like that, then we've been saying that for years. When you see brothers and sisters bounce out of here, it's Satan. He's calling them back to the world. You understand? Because, because either they uh, they don't know how to control their, uh, uh, their environment or they listen to their dumb thoughts who say, hey, you know, I can do my own thing. Then your own thing is go back to serve Satan. You understand? Because God brought you here. You did not brought yourself here. He brought you here. He tell you that. You know what? You remember what we was in the womb, right? Then I said, what is the character of a lost sheep? Character of a lost sheep, you always need a shepherd. <laughs> so when you left, so who's going to be your shepherd? Satan. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know what? What we've covered today, notice one heresy that came out from men that left here, they said Esau is the Arabs. We showed evidence, did we not, that the Caucasian is Edomite, did we not? We're going to prove what we say. So if you men and women, you get deceived out there, shame on you. Watch this, 1 Peter 2.21. Jesus Christ is our example. He's our commander. He's our witness. He's the leader. Watch what it says. 1 Peter 2, verse 21. This is for those who that say, oh, the Feast of Tabernacles is not required. Watch what it says here. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye shall follow his steps. Did Christ keep the Feast of Tabernacles? Sisters, did Christ keep the Feast of Tabernacles? So for anybody to say it's not required, you're a heretic now. That's right. The Spirit has left the building. Give me that in Judges 5.11. So if you men and women get deceived, shame on you. You get offended, shame on you. We've showed you the proper way. We've given you proof upon proof, scripture upon scripture. We've given you evidence within and without the Bible. Shame on you. Read that, Judges 5.11. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of arches in the places of drawing water. Places of drawing water is slavery. Go ahead. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. See that? That's what we're doing. Rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. That's why I said about Christ, he left us an example that we should follow his steps. He kept the Feast of Tabernacles. We going to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Watch this. Watch. Even, Go ahead. 
even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. So, we are rehearsing the righteous acts. So, when you rehearse something, you're rehearsing for the big day. Give me that in Zechariah 14. When is the big day, brother? Zechariah 14, verse 16, going to tell you the big day. Where it says it's showtime. You've been rehearsing all these years. Now comes the real deal. Let's see what you've learned. Rehearsal time will be over in the wilderness. Ain't no more rehearsal on that day. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall either go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's why we're rehearsing now. Because in the coming kingdom, all nations are going to have to keep this feast. So if you let a girl, if you let a boy tell you it's not required in Christ, you're an idiot. We're rehearsing for this day. Read it again. And it shall come to pass. It shall come, not might, not maybe. It shall come to pass. That everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Read. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth. So you Jerusalem, decide I don't want to go up. I ain't going up. It wasn't required in Jesus. It's not required. Go ahead. To worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. That means death, famine. Read. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So shame on you. You want to follow the steps of the Egyptians and not keep it? You're going to die. Go ahead. This shall be the punishment of Egypt. And the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's why we're rehearsing. That's why we're rehearsing. That's why we're rehearsing! You let somebody come and tell you it's not required in Christ. you got to be insane. That's, that's back to the Christian church. <laughs> They're back to the Christian church now. So if that's not required because we're going to keep it in the kingdom, look at Isaiah 66, 23. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 23. And it shall come to pass that for one new moon to another and for one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So not only is everyone going to have to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, everybody on the earth is going to have to keep the Sabbath and the new moon. So you mean to tell me that's not required either? We're rehearsing, brothers and sisters. We're rehearsing. Do y'all understand that? All praises to the Most High. I'm going to close it out right there. What is the nation? Yeah. 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 Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Ha!